Hey, 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 it's Adele from Let's Get Inky and today we are starting the Inky June Marathon. If you missed the first video yesterday over on my main channel, Inky Quill, uh, you can watch it there. But if you are new, you haven't been around for an Inky June Marathon before, we are having a video every single day in the month of June. Uh, alternating on Inky Quill and then Let's Get Inky, Inky Quill, Let's Get Inky. And today is the first day for Let's Get Inky for the month. So I am working, I'm working in this journal that I really, I have, uh, I have love for it, but I also have a lot of unlove, dislove, non-love, whatever the phrase may be. Uh, it's the Denim Journal by Dina Wakeley. And it's a, it's a fab journal for people who love lots of different uh, fabrics in their journals. However, I have struggled greatly, particularly with the denim pages uh, and the bur I think there was burlap in here. What was that the other one? Mm, not quite sure. But I have struggled greatly with the denim pages because of their floppiness. <laughs> uh, I'm quite used to, you know, a, a rigid... Uh, art journal and it does put me off uh, it throws me off that's just what I should say it throws me off so this is a journal that I have been working on uh, quite a bit on Patreon over the last year and I am determined to get it done uh, because currently I'm only working in two journals this one and an A4 uh, normal dilutions one and I, I, I really want to finish this one because uh, I have plans to start quite a few new journals over here um, on the channel this uh, month. So what I did there is I had some clear gesso and I smushed it all over the denim page uh, just to make a bit of a sealer for the denim page because what I have noticed and I did find this out the hard way, is that some mediums go through it. Ah, oh, yes, they go through onto the other side of the paper. And you can end up with a really horrible sticky mess on the other side of the paper, especially if it's already a page that you've done. Uh, and I didn't want that. So I put that down first. It probably wasn't necessary, um, but I really didn't want the wet glue from the back of this image to soak through uh, the page. So this image is just one that I got off a front cover of a magazine. I think it may have been Breathe magazine. And I really love the colours, so I kept it. Uh, so I stuck that down just with some wet glue. And then on the white page here, I haven't put gesso down on here. I haven't done anything to it. Uh, I'm getting my watercolours. These are both uh, old Jane Davenport ones. And I am just doing some splodgily watercoloring. And this is my, my favorite kind of watercoloring. Um, just doing abstracty blobs. Um, I quite, quite enjoy it. And I was just using some of the colors from the picture as a reference. So lots of um, yellows, blues, pinks, and a little bit of a orangey coral as well. You can see here I'm mixing the pink and the yellow to make that orangey coral color. And the thing you've got to be careful about here is making sure that you don't mud uh, your colors together. So I did a bit of red there and it was it was too dark. So I just dipped my paintbrush into my water and just added a bit more water to it. I gave it a little dry with my heat gun. Uh, and then I'm going to add a little bit more here and there. Usually I do uh, skip ahead and cut out all of the, the drying parts with my heat gun because I do spend a whole lot of my time just watching paint dry, which is not exciting at all. And so I, I skip that bit for you. Um, but here I did add some more splatters and things while it was drying. Uh, you get a much... You get a very varied effect if you add splats while the paint's still wet. You get more of a muted, um, blobbly look <laughs> to your splats. Um, but if you want splats that are quite circular and crisp, uh, definitely wait until the paint's dry. So I'm adding a few yellowy bits up here. And the yellow was too bright, too intense. So I just used some um, paper towel there to dry it off. And same thing down here. I'm just muting it out a little bit. 
I've left that white bit up the top there because I knew I wanted to do a quote uh, of some sort. What that quote is, I do not know yet, um, but it will come very soon. And this, look, to be honest with you, in this journal, I struggle most with these kind of pages that have the denim on one side and the white paper on the other side because I think because I'm so used to doing like double page spreads uh, that to me it feels really disconnected, the two different background papers. Uh, I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you journal, are you a double spread art journaler or do you just do single pages at a time? Uh, have you used this journal before and did you enjoy it? Um, did you find it a bit tricky like I do? Um, let me know how, how you um, find your art journaling process. So then the denim was really annoying me. Uh, really, really annoying me. So I grabbed some pale pink paint. I'm just off frame there, but... I tried to put some pale pink paint there and I was just going to do pale pink along the whole thing but I didn't like that either uh, and when I make these journal pages I completely wing it. I don't pre-plan them. Uh, at, at the very most I might pre-pick a, a stencil or an image um, that I want to use. So for this one all I had planned is that I wanted to use that focal image and this journal and, and that was it um, and so a lot of the time there's a lot of awkward stages to my journal pages where things look a little uh, wonky or clunky and it's just all part of the all part of the fun sometimes things work sometimes they don't and then we can cover them up and put another layer of paint or stenciling down um, but yeah, I didn't really like this pink. So I just kind of sat it there while I added some splatters to some other sections, uh, to kind of have a, have a think about it. And I'm glad I did. I'm, gl I'm glad I, I left it. Uh, I then decided to come in with a different color and I've got this beautiful turquoise that is very clearly almost run out. And I'm going to add some of that, um, in a little moment. I've got some darker pink here. I think the the idea of having just all pale pink was just too was too much, uh, and then I put the pink, the darker pink, on, and I wasn't a fan of that either. And so then I come in with the blue and I cover up some of the dark pink here. Um, but I know that I've got a little bit on the right hand side of that image. I've got that very skinny section here that I'm painting. And I had to have that because otherwise the book wouldn't close. I couldn't um, bump the image right up to the spine, particularly because this image is a, a cover, so it's quite thick. Um, and so I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I love this. I love a bit of turquoise. Turquoise anything makes me happy, so it works out well. And then I decided to do a very dodgy smushing of the paint around the outside of the pages uh, around the outside around the outside <laughs> can't say that without singing that the so those song lyrics um, and this would have been much easier with a sponge uh, which I have um, but I am stubborn <laughs> and I did not particularly want to reach for the sponge at this time so do do as I say not as I <laughs> Not as I do, put your stubbornness to the side uh, if you need to switch up things. So now I I thought about what I wanted to do next and that pink bit was really irking me. It just, it was sticking out like, like a sore thumb and so I grabbed a stencil. Um, this is one of my, oh, an old, old stencil from my stash and it's an oldie but a goodie. Uh, and so I did something that I, I, I don't know if I've done before, but I stenciled and changed up the uh, some of the paint color midway through stenciling. So I did some pinks and then I used the same stencil and also did some blues in a moment here. Here I go with a new sponge. These little sponges are just from Kmart. And they're in the makeup section and they are fabulous. Um, most of the time I try to wash them so that the paint um, 
you know, they, they soften up again and I can easily use them for a different colour um, another time. These two had been sitting on my desk for a little while and I had forgotten about them, uh, which happens. And so it's very easy to just snip the edge uh, and just reuse them for a different colour. So you can see here I'm layering the blue now um, in these little gaps and I freaking love it. It really tied this page together and it helped that uh, left hand side not seem so, I don't know, blobby with that light pink. Um, this page actually, this right hand side is uh, a page that I included in my Patreon printables for this month. Uh, if you're interested, I actually made the every month I do eight videos and uh, an entire printable collection um, to print and download. And there's access to, uh, I've been over there for almost six years, six years next month. And so there's about 500 videos and 72 months worth of printables to download. Um, but I have made the process video where I used the May printables including this art print um, I have made that public uh, so if you wanted to head over I'll put the link in the description um, but you can head over and watch that it's a triple process video and it shows how I use this month's printables um, in three different ways on a scrapbook layout a traveler's notebook page and an art journal page and I do use this art print, um, this right hand side of the page for quite a few things in there. So I thought just for this month, um, just for the June Marathon, I'd make um, that video public in case you wanted to see what Patreon is all about. Uh, I do a lot of different videos over there so you can see the titles of the videos, but not the actual content um, until you uh, become a patron but yes so that's that little one um, but I definitely want to print this uh, and put it up in my craft room I need to I'm rearranging my craft room <laughs> that's next week's job it's going to be a whole thing I'm just not happy with how it is at the moment but that's that's a tale for next week you'll probably see some bits and pieces of the old craft room actually there is a craft room tour Coming up on Inky Quill next week, I do believe, um, part one. And yes, it's it's just the craft room is just an ever evolving, <laughs> ever moving thing in the Inky land. Uh, but this page, oh, I've, I'm, I'm sick at the moment and I just <laughs> swallowed a cough. Have you ever done that? It's the most awkward thing. <laughs> oh, thanks for watching today, peeps. I'm sorry this voiceover was a little croaky. Um, I am on the end of sickness, but I'm hopefully going to shake it by the end of this weekend. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and get ready for a whole month, a whole month of these fun tangents. Uh, and I'll see you tomorrow over on Inky Quill with a new video. Bye. <laughs>